Uh, it's my pleasure here to share our journey on building out LinkedIn's GI platform. Uh, my name is Xiaofeng Wang, Edge Manager of GI Foundation. Cool. Uh, in today's talk, I'd like to first share our journey on building out this platform, especially on why we're building it, how we build it, and what we're building it. After that, we will talk about uh, some thought process on why this platform is critical for today's agent world. Uh, hopefully, after that, you agree with me this is a critical component in your, component, uh, uh, in your company, and you also want to build this team I want to share some tips on how to build such a team, how to hire for such a team. Towards the end, we will share some key takeaways and lessons learned. Before we dive into this application uh, platform journey, I think it's important to first talk about the GI product experience because that's essentially what our platform is supporting for. Back in 2023, LinkedIn launched the first uh, formal GI feature called Collaborative Articles. This is a kind of straightforward uh, GI feature if we are thinking in today's standard because it's a very simple prompt in, string out type of application. Uh, we leverage ChatGPT, uh, I mean, we leverage GPT-4 model uh, to create uh, the long content uh, articles on the platform and they invite our members to comment on it. At this stage, our team helped to build some key component behind the scene, including the gateway to centralize the access to the model, uh, some Python notebook for the prompt engineering. Uh, but at this time, we actually have uh, two different tech stacks uh, to serve the uh, experience. In the online phase, we use Java, and in the back end, we use Python. Uh, we wouldn't call this as a platform at this time. Very soon we realized uh, there are some limitations for this simple approach. Especially it lacks the capability to inject our rich data into the product experience. Then in the mid-2023, we started to develop the second generation of the GI product. Uh, internally we call it Copilot or Coach. Here we're showing one popular such experience on LinkedIn right now. Uh, basically, it looks at uh, your profile and the job description, and then uh, use uh, some rag process to give you personalized uh, recommendation on if you are a good fit to the job. At this time, we started to build uh, some platform capability. Uh, specifically, in the center of our platform, we build the uh, Python SDK on top of the popular uh, launching framework to orchestrate LM calls. And it also provides the key value to integrate with our large-scale infrastructure uh, in this SDK. So our developers can easily assemble an uh, application. We started to unify the tech stack at this stage because we realized it's really costly to transfer the Python prompt into the Java world, not to mention the error during this process. We started to invest on the prompt management or prompt source of truth. This is a sub-module at this stage uh, to help developers to version their prompt and uh, to provide some structure around their meta prompt. Uh, the most important piece I'd like to call out here is conversational memory. Uh, this is uh, infrastructure to help to keep track of the LLM interactions and the retrieval content and then inject those content into the final product. It will help us to build this kind of conversational uh, bot. Now, uh, zooming to this year, uh, actually in the last year, uh, we launched our first ever uh, real multi-agent system called uh, LinkedIn Hire Assistant. Uh, this is a multi-agent system to help our recruiters to do their work uh, efficiently. Especially, it automates several tedious tasks uh, normally recruiters need to do manually, like uh, uh, post the job uh, and uh, evaluate hundreds of candidates, then uh, reach out to them. Our platform also starts to evolve into the agent platform. Uh, from the framework side, 
we extend the support of the Python SDK into a more large scale um, distributed agent orchestration layer. It will handle the distributed agent execution and also handle the more complicated scenarios like retry logic and the traffic shift. Uh, for folks who build agent, uh, I think you probably know the skills or APIs are one key aspect of the agent because we expect uh, this agent to perform some action. One investment we did at this uh, time is around the skill registry. Basically, we have a set of tools uh, to help our developers to publish their API into this centralized skill registry. This skill registry can handle the skill discovery problem, skill invocation problem. So in your application, it's actually very easy to call the API to perform some task. Another key component uh, we invest uh, at this stage is on the memory. In addition to the conversational memory, we extend uh, its capability into the experiential memory. Essentially, it's a memory storage to uh, extract and analyze and infer the contextual knowledge from the interaction between the agent and our user. We also organize this memory into different layers, including the um, uh, working memory, long-term memory, collective memories. Uh, this can help our agent to be aware of the surrounding content. Uh, lastly, at this uh, time, we also realize the observability is super important because agent, uh, one key aspect to define agent is autonomous, right? Uh, because agent can decide what API they can call, uh, what LLM they need to call. So it's actually very hard to predict its behavior. So we started to invest on the operability. Uh, particularly, we built our in-house solution on top of the hotel to keep track of very low level granularity of the uh, telemetry data. So we can use this data to replay the uh, agent call. And we also add an uh, actual layer of the analytics on top of it. So we can use that to guide the future optimization of our agent systems. Let's put together all the components we build for this platform. Uh, we can classify them into four layers, basically, including the orchestration, prompt engineering, tools and the skills invocation, content, and the memory uh, management. Uh, of course, that's not everything in the LinkedIn GenI ecosystem. Uh, in addition, we have our sister teams to build out the modeling layer, like fine tune the open source models, responsible AI layers to make sure the agent is behave according to our policy and the standard, and also the uh, AI platform or machine learning infrastructure team to host those models. The key value proposition for this uh, GenI platform is actually to uh, be the unified interface for this complex ecosystem. So our developers don't need to necessarily understand all those individual bugs when they build uh, their application. Instead, they can leverage our platform to quickly access to this entire ecosystem. Uh, for example, uh, in our SDK, the developer can just uh, switch one parameter in the one line of the code to switch from the OpenAI model to our on-prem model. Of course, they still need to do the prompt engineering, but that reduces a lot of the complexity on the infrastructure integration phase. Uh, last but the most important is, because of this is a centralized platform, uh, it provides a place to enforce the best practice and governance. So we can make sure our developers are building the applications efficiently, but also responsibly. As you can see from our journey, we actually started to build this uh, platform piece by piece, and then this platform started to emerge. If we take one step back and think, uh, do we really need this platform at this time? Especially there are lots of uh, 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 vendor product uh, on this space. Shall we buy it, build it, and why do we need to buy it or build it? Uh, here are some thoughts. Um, the short answer is yes. The reason behind it is, uh, we feel like uh, Gen AI is a totally different uh, new AI systems compared to the traditional AI systems. So in the traditional AI systems, there's a clear cutoff between the uh, AI model optimization phase and the 
model serving phase. So AI engineers and the product engineers can operate in two different tech stacks. Uh, they usually don't uh, need to uh, work on the same code base. But in the Gen AI systems, what we're seeing is this line between the optimization phase and the serving phase disappear. Basically, everyone is an AI engineer who can optimize the overall system performance. This actually created the new challenge of the tooling and the best practice in the company. Essentially, we think these GI systems or uh, agent systems is a compound AI system. Here, we borrow the definition from Berkeley AI Research Lab. A compound AI system can be defined as a system which tackles AI tasks using multiple interacting components, including multiple calls to model retrievers or external tools. As you can see, this is actually skewed across AI engineer and product engineer. And I believe this uh, Gen AI app platform is trying to bridge this gap. To summarize, uh, we believe this platform is critical for your success, mainly because it can bridge the skill gaps between those two group engineers. Okay. Let's say if you want to build this uh, platform in your company and how to hire it is a frequent question uh, I heard. Uh, I basically look into uh, my great engineering team and uh, extract all the key qualifiers from those top engineers. And uh, I put all the qualifications here. Uh, the ideal candidate in this team is a strong software engineer uh, who can build infrastructure integration. They have a good developer uh, PM skills to design the interface. Uh, ideally, they have the AI and the data science background to understand the, the latest the techniques. They are the people who can learn from the latest techniques, but at the same time, they are hands-on. Unfortunately, it's really hard to get those candidates. If you get them, uh, it's probably worth more than a unicorn. Realistically, we are making multiple trade-offs in the hiring. Uh, here are some principles uh, we follow, and it's actually working pretty well on to share here. In terms of the core skills, uh, we usually prioritize the stronger software engineer skills over the AI expertise. This might be controversial, but uh, 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 we can discuss if you're interested. Second is, instead of hiring for experience or degrees, we hire for the potential. Because this field is evolving so fast, most of the experience might be outdated. In case you won't be able to find a single engineer with all the qualifications we're showing here, uh, the way we are solving this problem is to hire a diversified team. So, so for example, uh, in our team, we have some full stack software engineers, we have uh, data scientists, we have AI engineers and uh, data engineers. We also have uh, fresh grads uh, from the top research university and also uh, some people from the startup background. And then we put them together uh, into the project. What we've seen is based on those collaboration, those strong engineers start to pick up new skills in the project. And very soon, they started to grow into these ideal candidates. Uh, lastly, I uh, want to emphasize is uh, the critical thinking. Uh, one constant topic uh, in our team meeting is uh, no matter what we're building right now, it will be outdated within a year or even less than six months. So we consistently evaluate the latest open source package, talking with vendors, and deprecate our solution more proactively. Cool, let's talk about say, uh, some uh, key takeaways, uh, especially on the tech stack choice. If possible, we strongly recommend uh, Python. We started with Java and Python. Uh, there are some back and forth of the debate internally, but finally we picked Python, and I think that's the right choice, especially most research and uh, open source uh, are in this space. Based on our experience, it's also scalable. In terms of the uh, key components you want to build in this platform, the first one is a prompt source of truth. Prompt in some way is like uh, traditional model parameters. 
you want to have a really robust system to version control your prompt. This is really, really critical for the operational stability. You don't want to accidentally add it to your prompt in production and uh, see some really side effect. Second key component is on the memory. I think in today's uh, meeting, uh, I mean today's talk, someone already talked about it. Memory is a really key component to inject your rich data into the agent experience. Lastly, in the agent era, uh, one key new component we are building is on the uplifting our APIs into skills which can be called from the agent easily. So you can uh, build some surrounding tooling and infrastructure to support this need. All right, let's talk about how to uh, scale this solution and got, get it adopted. Uh, from our experience, instead of trying to build this full-fledged uh, platform at the beginning, try to solve immediate need. For example, we started with a simple Python library to support orchestration, then we start to grow into the, all the components we're seeing here. Second is uh, focus on the infrastructure and the scalable solution. On LinkedIn, we actually have a pretty good success story by leveraging our uh, messaging infrastructure uh, to be as a memory layer. Uh, it's both cost efficient and scalable. Lastly is uh, focus on the developer experience. By the end of the day, this platform is trying to help developer to be as productive as possible. Their adoption is a key for the success. If you can design this platform, please focus on uh, how to align your technology with their existing uh, workflow. So it will ease adoption and uh, be more successful. Uh, we actually have lots of low level details on the technical side. Uh, if you are interested, please check out our engineering blog post uh, on LinkedIn uh, by Karthik, Sandeep, and myself. Uh, with that, uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, if you are having more questions, happy to answer that after the talk. Thank you.